Uh, hello everyone, I'm Glenn Jones here at the sideboard with Ricky Hayashi. Uh, Ricky is a member of our event staff and a level 3 judge. Many of you may be familiar with him from a wide variety of events that you've worked, right? That's true. Too many to Too count. Too many to count. Uh, so what I brought Ricky in here is to kind of give you guys the understanding of what happened with the ruling that happened at the match we were just watching. Uh, the game state, as has been explained to me, and I am assuming I am correct, uh, is uh, Giovanna Stalia is in play against a Volcanic Island and a Grim Lava Mancer on David McDarby's side. Okay. Uh, Wasteland targets the single Volcanic Island, the only land David has. Mm -hmm. He floats a blue mana, and then when she moves to pass phase, casts a Brainstorm and immediately draws his three cards, which obviously he does not have a second mana for Thalia's ability. Right. So as a judge, what's the ruling in this situation? Okay. So what's happened here is that David McDarby has committed a game rule violation. He's cast a Brainstorm that he does not have the correct mana to cast. He would need a blue and another mana to account sure. for the Thalia in play. Uh, by doing so, although he did proceed to resolve the spell and drew cards that he was not entitled to have, a game rule violation was already committed. So at that point, that invalidates the drawing extra cards afterwards. Okay. The philosophy here is that we don't want people like uh, Giovanna, you said the opponent mm -hmm. was? We don't want her to kind of sit and wait for him to draw the cards. A mistake has already been made. It's both players' responsibility to maintain the proper game state. Even though, you know, she might not have had the opportunity to go, hey, wait, wait, you can't draw those cards. Once the GRV has been committed, that's the focus of the infraction here. We say, okay, game rule violation committed before the cards were drawn. We're going to rewind to as much of a correct game state as we can achieve, which means in this case, you take three random cards from his hand. You know, if they've been combined with his hand, we don't know which ones are supposed to be there. So we're going to take three random cards, put them back on top of his library. Uh, he doesn't, he hasn't tapped a land, so we're not going to rewind any mana abilities. He's already floated that mana. Okay. So put the brainstorm back in his hand from the stack and then proceed from there. Okay, so basically because normally what might be considered a drawing extra cards infraction is derived here from the GRV. Right. It is not a, itself a separate right. infraction, because, it's just yeah. a GRV. Because the game rule violation was committed prior and again, that is the kind of source of the error here. Okay. And both players theoretically have a chance to spot that error and stop the subsequent illegal actions from happening. So am I correct in, in saying that basically it's almost like a kind of a double jeopardy thing where like you're not going to penalize the player for essentially the same action in two different versions right, of right. a penalty? Correct. Okay. Uh, so I hope that that clarified it for you guys at home. Uh, obviously we all had a lot of different reactions, uh, both in the booth and on Twitter from people, and I just wanted to clarify the actual ruling, which is not always what it might appear to be or what you guys at home or even myself might assume it to be. Uh, the judges usually know what they're doing here, and uh, Ricky yeah. agrees with this Every particular judge and his ruling, who did it apparently completely correctly. Yeah, uh, everything sounds like it was handled correctly here. I mean, the only thing is you would think that someone who dresses like Jace would be able to brainstorm <laughs> better, but hey. <laughs> Uh, I also did want to note for the viewers at home who urged us to use the tape to figure out what the cards in David's hand uh. were before the brainstorm. We are actually not allowed to do that. A DCI policy update has made it that judges can't use this particular information right. to make their rulings. Uh, in, in cases where a match occurs under camera, judges are only allowed to use video replay in the course of an investigation where they think that someone might be cheating. Okay. to use that as evidence uh, of any potential cheating infractions. To try to repair a game state uh, off of a video replay, I think one of the things is we just don't have the technology like the NFL does to go, snap, give me a replay of that right now. Uh, that's just not possible. Sure. And we don't want to try to gauge how much time you know, something like this might take. It could take five seconds to look at a tape and figure something out. It could take 20 minutes. And at the beginning of such an investigation, if you can't tell, like, we just don't want to uh, take that chance. Sure. All right. Well, thank you, Ricky, for joining us in the booth and mm -hmm. explaining all this. Nope, I'll no let you problem, get back Glenn. to your events staffing duties, and I'll let you guys get back to the Legacy Open.